Whatever goes up, whoever goes up, must come down, right? That's the theme that I've been looking at lately, is that we should always look up and then look down to see where we're walking and where we're going. Which brought a lot of questions to my mind and reminded me of some of my days back in seminary. There was a question in the one class that we had. It was a biblical class. It was about studying the Bible. And one of the students turned around to the instructor and says, I got a question. He said, as ministers, do we devote ourselves to God or to the people we serve? The room got real quiet because we're all studying to be pastors and ministers. Who, who do we show our 100% devotion to? Well, the instructor looked at us and he goes, both. Another student popped up and said, well, so then as Christians, are we devoted to God or devoted to people? He answered, yes, both. Yes. Again, we started thinking that we must divide our time now between God and people. So how do we do this? Well, this today's reading of the Transformation Sunday, that's what today is. It helps us a little bit to understand what is happening. You know, this is a story you've heard before of all the excitement and the joy up on the mountain and coming back down. I know we all would like to hear something like that, don't you? Don't you enjoy that moment to hear how joyful it is? And, and, what, and, then, and then when we come down from the mountain, we find that some things have happened. If you recall, it said, what happened to these disciples when they came down? He said, on the next day they came down from the mountain, a great crowd came around them. These people were excited. They were up on the mountain praying with God. Except one. He yelled out, teacher, teacher, I need your help, man. My son is crippled. My son is sick. Come help me. And the demon took him over. He's begging. But then he made another, another comment. He said there, that was quite interesting. He says, I asked your disciples to do this, and they couldn't. They didn't. But Jesus said it was his faithfulness, it was you faithfulness, that would preserve his generation and make his son better, that his life and his family heritage will continue. Jesus is saying, even as us as disciples, we can do it, providing both people have the faith. Serving the people with faith, just as we serve God with faith faith and they were astounded by that so I look at it again I said man the minute these guys come down from being really happy what had happened you know they come down they're like yes man I saw Elijah I saw Mo. I am happy and right back into this pain stricken diseased filled with death world now I know why Peter said, let's build three houses up here. Really, he wanted to build four, one for them. To stay with them. To not return to this ordinary world. They went up. They didn't want to come down. But God asked us that we should go up and look up to him and ask him for help. So that we come down and serve him. And to serve others. So the question, who do we serve? God or the people? Both. Again, we're at that both. I mean, look at the story of that, uh, the child that was sick. I mean, there's three lessons right alone in just that little story there. That little tidbit. There is three lessons for us as Christians. See, in disciples. The first one is that. We need to alternate our lives between Christ and between that mountain of joy, that happiness of being in heaven, and that Christ needy, the people here on earth. We need to alternate back and forth. 
to understand what we're doing. You see, the, the nature of us as people, see, we have a tendency to in, overindulge on one side of this God-people relationship. Most of the time, we look at the people and become devoted to people. It's our human nature. We look more to the human side than the godly side. But it's saying here we need to alternate. We need to go back and forth. To have faith in both. And every time we do that, we will understand things. But that's hard to do, isn't it? It's hard for us as humans to look and go back and forth. Well, did you know that right here in this sanctuary and this church... We have something to remind us of that every day. Sitting on our altar. I see two candles up here. Do you know what those candles represent? Why do we have two candles on the altar? It represents the the reincarnation of Jesus Christ. One candle signifies the the divinity of of God, of Jesus, that he is God. The other candle represents the humanity of Jesus Christ when he came down to earth. Alternate back and forth. Jesus is human. Jesus is God. It's there. And what is in between? Our Father. We must go back and forth between them. So every time you come into church, and if you have a problem about helping humans and just worshiping God, or worshiping humans and not worship God, that we should look at it that we need to go back and forth to alternate. And when we alternate, we do what? We share God's word with each other, don't we? We heal those that are out there. Now let's look at the second lesson that we could find in this thing. It it teaches us that Jesus has the power over evil. That he is God. He went to heaven and he came down for us. He's showing us the realm of God and the realm of God's people. And that He shows us that we can balance it between our earthly position and our heavenly position. That we can follow the example of Jesus Christ and look to God, but look to the earth and be able to do both. Because if we look too much to heaven, we'll miss our calling here on earth that God asks us to do, don't we? And if we worry too much about the nuts and bolts of life and helping those here, we then do what? Miss our Christian service that we're called to. And we forget that God's power that is here everywhere with us. That's amazing, isn't it? So we need to look up in order to come down to help those to be able to look up. When I said, speaking of looking up, that I came across a story that I read. I was quite, thought it was quite amusing for us. It was about a former heavyweight boxer named James Quick Tillis. He was a cowboy from Oklahoma, or from Oklahoma. And when he arrived in Chicago in the 1980s, he made a remark on the first day that he came into the city from Tulsa. He said, I got off the bus with my two cardboard suitcases under my arms, in downtown Chicago. I stopped in front of the Sears Tower. I put my suitcases down and I looked up at the towers. And I said to myself, I'm going to conquer Chicago. With that proudness in his voice, he turned down and looked down and found out both his suitcases were gone. Were gone. There's a simple point to that is that if we're too preoccupied looking to God, when we look down, those people who need our help, who we're asked to do, will be gone. We'll miss that opportunity. 
We'll miss that time to show people about God and to guide them and to help spread God's healing grace to everyone. Hmm. How many times in our lives do we feel that we're up and things are great, everything's working fine, and the job is great, the kids are good, oh, the money's coming in fine, everything is perfect for me. And then bam, something happens. Whether it's an illness, unemployment, grief, injustice, failure, whatever can happen to our lives, when that happens, what do we do? We look at the earthly side and we forget about God. Sometimes we even say, is, where's God? Where is he? Why is this happening to me? That is the point in time that we got to quit looking just to earth, but to look to God and say, I understand, Lord, help me. And he will help you when you look back down again because somebody will be there with an open hand, open arms to help you. God asks us to go and ask for his help so that we can come down and share it and others can share it with us. This brings us to the third lesson of this little piece here. It's, it reminds us that discipleship can be one of the greatest stumbling blocks of all. Because what happens, it turns to boredom. Boredom. And often it seems like it's a disappointing thing. Because our lives become routine as a Christian. Doesn't it? We go out, we share God's love. We go out and we help someone. We go out and share God's love. We go out and help someone. We pray to God, we go out and help someone. We go out and share God's love. Does it become a boring routine? I find a lot of ministers have ran that. They teach us a little bit that we need to change things up. That life is a little different. That we have to change everything we're doing. How many of you attend Bible study every week? How many of you think you've heard enough of the Bible that you know you don't need the Bible study anymore? You see, that's one of the things that a lot of people think. I attended Bible school study when I was younger. I know it. I've read it. But every time we turn around, there's something new coming out. There's a new thought, a new way, a new thing. Every verse in the Bible has at least seven different meanings to every verse that we can find a lesson out of everything. And we can never master studying the Bible. Never. I'm actually on my sixth time of trying to read the Bible front to back. I've read it five times. I'm on the sixth. And I read it. Every day. I was joking Christian before when he came in. I said, oh, here's the lessons today. Maybe I should read it. He chuckled. Knowing I've already read it. Not once, not twice, but about six times. Try to understand it, to know where it's going. What does this mean to me? See, I need to read the Bible over and over again and again. All of a sudden, it seems to be that boring repetition but it's not. Look at it differently each time we read it. Just like praying. Do you think you prayed enough? Do you think you ever be done praying? Will it ever be complete? Can praying be boring? It can be. So change it up. Pray in the morning. Pray at night. Next day, pray in lunchtime. Pray while you're in the car. Pray while you're sitting outside and enjoying the beautiful day. It doesn't have to be just come to Sunday morning and pray. It doesn't have to be just pray in the morning or pray at night. Pray whenever. And that help breaks it up and it won't be so boring to you. How many of you uh, heard those comments? Hey, your prayer was great today. I really liked it. I can't wait till tomorrow to hear your prayer. 
How many of you heard that, hey, Bible study was awesome, and I know i got to be here tomorrow because it's going to be even better? It's great to hear those things. But guess what? It's not the same because every day a new opportunity rolls around, doesn't it? Something new happens in our lives. Our lives are based on today. And it creates what tomorrow will be. So we live as a Christian life as usual. Things in our lives are important, but we do them over and over, again and again. And sometimes there's some Christians out there that do that. They just kind of say, oh, it's okay, put it on cruise control, let it go. I'll just do it. Over and over. And what happens is when that happens to a Christian, we don't look up to God and ask for that help. We don't look and ask for that forgiveness. And we must do that every day. You know, whether or not we're a Sunday school teacher, a minister, a teacher of Bible study, VBS, and play the piano, whatever tasks that we do and are asked to do, there's another one waiting for us when we complete it, isn't there? See, Christian life can be boring. It can make us a boring person if we don't capture what God's beauty is in it and look at God's grace and look up to God now and then. You see, we have to look to our Lord because we need that fire of God's spirit to continue to bring us that energy and creativity and to be able to respond to those who are in need. See, it is important task for us as Christians to do the daily things, the boring things, but to share it with that enthusiasm of something new every day. Jesus is telling us in all of this today that I can see that he says that looking up is quite vital for our relationship with God. But we also must look down so that we can do God's will. So whenever we look up, we know we're with God. And then when we come down to earth and look down, we can serve others and do as well. So the answer to the question is, we need to do both. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, continue to give us the strength to go out into the world and to serve others. But remind us, Lord, that we need to look to you for guidance, for your spirit to refresh us, to give us new ways, new decisions. Help us to see what it is that we're supposed to do, that our life may seem boring, but it can never be boring with you. Help us, Lord, to continue to help those who are in need and guide us, Lord, as we walk that path that you have chosen for us as your devoted disciples. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.